Hello my Barbies and Kens in Christ. I'm Boyan and today we are dismembering a Barbie. I mean Barbie the movie. I mean who of us hasn't dismembered a Barbie? It is pure guilt-free sadistic fun. Well, unless you ignore the implications of this movie. Now, personally, I like the movie. People on my ideological side like the movie. People on my ideological side hated the movie. This movie is essentially a Rochehurst test. There's something for everyone. Barbie is in a way a mirror of our own humanity. We live in society. There are many layers to this film, but I hope to show to you that the balancing of these issues is precisely the main problem of this movie. Also, there are so many aspects of the movie that I simply cannot cover them all, and the ones that I do cover I can't go into deep. I just hope to provide you with some food for the thought. Before we move on, spoilers ahoy henceforth. I will also assume you have seen the movie, but you can still watch the episode even if you haven't seen it. Some context may be lacking though. As opposed to my previous movie dismemberments, I won't discuss the entirety of the plot of the movie, mostly the themes as they appear. Chapter 1. Motherhood. Is it too vain of me to divide these into chapters considering it isn't too big of an episode? Anyway, there is an homage to Space Odyssey with toddlers destroying porcelain baby dolls. Is this anti-motherhood? Personally, I don't see it as such. I just see it as girls moving on to a better toy. There's only so much you can do with a baby doll. Now, kids like playing pretend, especially pretending to be grown-ups. But making a grown-up as an object of your play? Now that's revolutionary. There is a pregnant Barbie in the movie, which constantly gets put down due to poor sales. And, you know, economy and motherhood aren't really the two categories you want to mix too much. I like that the movie at least says that you can be fulfilled by motherhood. Chapter 2. The Original Sin During a girl's night, and there are many, Barbie asks, do you guys ever think about death? And everything goes haywire. This is this movie's version of the original sin, the mere talk of death, that spawns everything else. I try to find who said it, but someone defined culture as everything we do in order not to think about death. Death still remains a huge taboo, and they do have an appreciation for the Christian implications of the damage Barbieland is experiencing beginning with the introduction of death. There is no sin per se, as, of course, in secularism, sin does not exist, only crime. But hey, at least it's a start. Chapter 3. Ken and Patriarchy This is the biggest issue of the film. The film simply proclaims patriarchy as bad and matriarchy as good. Masculinity is always toxic, femininity isn't, or it is not as toxic. The way things are set up, one would think that there are no women in power anywhere, and that patriarchy is simply there, evil and ominous. The same is not said of femininity. For the patriarchy, it is outright stated. For femininity, it is inferred. Now, the good side is that the movie does portray Ken as a victim of Barbie. For all the flawed aspects of femininity versus masculinity, Ken is always on the sidelines and his depression stems from being underappreciated, and the movie says that. The film makes a good point in that Ken should not find his identity just as being Barbie's boyfriend, but to go beyond. Chapter 4. Blatant Consumerism Do you know we have a Bible Illustrated merch store? Yeah, we do. Head off to bibleillustrated.selfie with double L dot store and get your shirts, mugs and stickers today. So it's bibleillustrated.selfi with double L dot store. Chapter 5. Toxic Femininity Audience is made to cheer for Barbies preventing cans from changing the constitution, but we have no clue what any of these documents, enacted or drafted, actually contain. The very way Barbies prevent the change is extremely toxic essentially by making this jealousy ring amidst the cans. Now, there is some self-awareness that femininity can be as toxic as masculinity, when cans ask Barbies to have at least some seat of power in Barbie land, but ultimately, there is no equality or meritocracy here. Remember what I said just now, and I'm putting a pin in that previous sentence. Chapter 6. The Litany of Snapping Out 
Now, a poorly done part of the movie is, in my opinion, the litany of snapping out, or how the women of the real world break the spell of cans over other Barbies, by listing how difficult it is being a woman. A lot of these are just human condition, some are everyday stuff, and yet others are far too complicated to be addressed by this movie or this episode. I hate preachiness, I didn't like it in Nefarious, and I don't like it here. Yes, I'm aware of the irony that I'm being preachy, and this is a preachy channel. I just dislike it in fiction. Now, don't get me wrong, these are very real problems, I'm not putting them down. I just feel like it seems that the female issues are the only issues, at least as this movie presents them. Speaking of issues, chapter 7. Balance issues. This is a recurring motive in practically all of the previous chapters. I understand that the movie is geared towards the women. Heck, it is a Barbie movie. I think that the movie would benefit Ted more if it investigated the aspect of toxic femininity. I'm not asking for 50-50. Would be just nice if it went Ted more in that territory. However, I will do something probably shocking to my audience and defend some of the film's choices. Ultimately, there is no equality or meritocracy here when referring to this film. Well... That holds true for this real world too. There is no equality or meritocracy here either. In general, this world is geared towards men, so I don't mind that the movie is trying to give more footing to women. However, what I do like about it is, while being pro-feminism and everything, it does not turn a blind eye to actual male suffering, and I really appreciate it for it, because I think that the dismissiveness towards the other side, whichever side that might be, causes a lot of problems and miscommunication in this world. This movie preaches, but it preaches from a proper pulpit. This isn't a superhero movie that's preaching at men, and that is a good side. It is a proper venue for proper audience. Chapter 8. The Miscellanea Well, the humor is top-notch. There are some plot holes. When Barbie is about to become a real b girl, the ghost of Ruth Candler tells her that mortality is part of being a human, which kind of falls flat, since not only is Ruth a ghost, she can manipulate material objects with ease, so her comment comes off as weird. It is also a bit ironic that Barbie still opts to live in this male-dominated and dark real world as opposed to Barbie land. And speaking of which, it is very ironic that all the woes of Barbie were caused by a woman. That's about it. Thank you to all the donors on Ko-fi, Subscribestar and Patreon, as well as our channel members, who probably did not sign up for a movie dismemberment like this, but it is what it is. If you'd like to see a movie that is just about as preachy, watch the movie Dismemberment of Nefarious. And if you like... demonic liches pretending to be statues, which is the closest thing to Barbie I could find in my repertoire, watch the episode on The Unholy. Bye!